What if when you looked at the world, it looked like this? Although it's impossible to make it 100% accurate, this visual simulation is something I was able to create with the help of Justin Salas to represent what the world looks like to him. In an article from Huang Nguyen, it said that 70% of Americans would miss their sense of sight the most. And it goes without saying how crucial sight is for anyone in the world. In Justin's case, around the age of 14, he wasn't given a choice. Uh, so they've given me a temporary diagnosis because okay. they don't actually know what's going on. Okay. Uh, it's an optic neuropathy of unknown origin. Okay. And for people who have no clue about anything. Yeah. Yeah, essentially your optic nerves, uh, they atrophy or they die mm -hmm. or are in the process of dying. So I actually just recently went to the do uh, eye doctor to like have a checkup and uh, she was confirming to me that my optic nerves are white. Yeah. Like normally they should be pink, like your skin has color to it because there's blood flow in it. My optic nerves are, are like, there's like a little blood blood flow in them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they don't actually know what's causing it. <laughs> and I'm still an anomaly. I first met Justin back in 2018 at the outdoor retailer show. Like most people that meet him for the first time, I didn't know that he was visually impaired. To me, I just saw a really built guy who spoke calmly and eloquently. This is a 2018 paraclimbing world champion. Competition paraclimbing is a very dedicated small world in an already niche sport that most people don't know too much about. At the IFSC Paraclimbing World Championship, there are classifications and categories for the athletes to compete in. The three classifications are visual, amputee, and limited range power or stability. There are several categories in each classification that athletes can compete in. The differences in categories are in place so athletes can compete on a more equitable platform. For instance, a leg amputee would not compete in the same category as an arm amputee. In the case of an athlete falling in multiple categories or classifications, which category the athlete competes in is taken case by case. Justin competes in the B2 category, which by definition means that the competitors have a visual acuity of up to 2 over 60 or a visual field of less than 5%. In recency, IFSC paraclimbing competitions are held as top rope competitions, and the main reason for this is because many clipping stances for climbers would not be equitable. Say a left hand clip would be difficult for a left limbed amputee. Bouldering is also not an event at the World Championships as taking ground falls for some athletes is not possible. Although top roping is the case for IFSC paraclimbing competitions, many of these athletes do lead climb and boulder. Craig DeMartino, Maureen Beck, Matthew Phillips are all well known for their lead climbing and bouldering. And the main focus of this video, Justin Salas loves bouldering. I've got like 90% of my vision in the center of my vision is gone. Yeah. I can kind of discern contrast and shapes, uh, contrast and like light basically, that's about it. Uh, but my peripheral vision works pretty normally. Mm -hmm. um, so I can function and get around. Uh, so for climbing, it, it was nice because like I knew where I needed to be in space, but I needed someone to guide for me or I could just touch the holds and like memorize where they were. But I can't like eye up a hold and go get it. You know, I have to like remember where it is. Yeah. Um. Justin told me he was coming to Colorado for a bouldering trip and his main goal was to get some boulders under his belt. I met up with him at the Dark Horse Boulder in Guanella Pass, which goes at V10 or 7C+. As I walked up the hill, I was greeted with his friendly Oklahoman accent and a smile. His friend Armin Avanesian was there as well. Having climbing partners is always a nice thing to have, no matter who you are. And in Justin's case, Armin plays a big role in helping him find holds. Justin will ask for guidance and description of some holds before he goes for them, and Armin will give him directions to place his feet and hands in the right place. Now, Justin is strong, and when I say strong, I mean really strong. Many of times he has to lock off on the worst holds so he has time to feel for holds. The holds he's locking off on Dark Horse are holds that many climbers have to train years just to be able to hold. But Justin has such incredible strength that he can lock off the holds and hold positions while he searches for feet and hands. 
All three of us, Armin, Justin, and I, worked on Dark Horse for a while, and ultimately we're all getting very close to the top. I think the best way to understand how Justin climbs is to see the contrast between my best attempt of the day and his. Try to describe the best you can what it, like what the world looks like, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, a, there's so many different ways it could be described. Uh, like there's noise from like a camera, you know, like when a camera's overexposed, yeah. like, like so far that way that you can't really see what it is. Mm -hmm. That's like one way to describe it. I've also described it as like yanking the cords out of an old school TV, like a tube um, TV, and it goes gray. Yeah. Like some some people might not remember that, but like that was a, something I remembered as a kid, uh, seeing that, and it kind of represented itself in my vision loss. Um, my left eye is definitely the worst for sure. Yeah, um, like it's pretty bad, and it's got a dark tint to it. Uh, the right eye is. Use, you know, it's way more usable than the left yeah. eye. Uh, so essentially, I've got a dead spot in the center of my vision, um, and it looks like static, like I was describing, uh -huh. and I navigate off of my peripheral vision. Yeah. <laughs> V10 or 7C Plus is definitely getting towards the upper echelon of climbing and chances are when you go to a climbing gym, a handful of people will have climbed this grade outdoors. Justin has done several V10s as well as V11, notably worm turns in Joe's Valley. And it's because he is able to climb the same problems as everyone else, if anything, some of the boulders he's done are dream climbs for many people, the term adaptive climbing is crucial to describing what he does. I'm going to let John Sador explain what adaptive climbing is. In literal format, adaptive climbing is for people with physical limitations or ailments. You know, you gotta start thinking outside the box, and I think it's inherent to climbing. There's no right or wrong way to do it, and that's sort of what makes the whole sport and lifestyle beautiful. You know, even though physically, yes, I'm lacking a limb, in my mind, it's also like every climber adapts on every route they climb because it's very rare, especially for example between different genders, that I see you know a man and a woman do the same thing. Not because one is any less strong; it's just different body types. Justin's strength and ability to adapt to his environment is the perfect example of why he's such a top-level adaptive climber. But ability to adapt to his climbing extends past that and into his everyday life. I was able to sit down and learn more from him and listen to his life story. Hmm. How, how long did it take you to feel like, you know, I'm actually not bad at this? Uh, within the first, I don't actually, that's a great question. Um, within the first four months I had climbed to be four or wow. five or something. And then within like the first six months I had climbed like V7. Um, and that was outside like I quickly understood that climbing in the gym was fun but like what I wanted was outside yeah and uh, during this time Armin and I were getting to know each other and we would go outside with our buddy Matt a lot um, and I went to Joe's Valley in 2016 I think with uh, my buddy Matt Frederick who was my side guide and is my side guide for competitions um, and so yeah I kind of just fell in love with being outside and trying I was like a backpacker beforehand, okay. and I thought like, I love being outside, and what's the next evolution from backpacking? <laughs> it must be climbing. <laughs> yeah. And I told my friends that, uh, you know, 
I had tried climbing and we should go try it again and so we ended up going and trying it. Now you can backpack, but that's just like the approach to the yeah. climbs, isn't it? You know? Now I'm not stoked on backpacking because I don't want to approach to nowhere. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I want to go climbing. I, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it wasn't until I went to a So Ill Showdown. Um, okay, which, which year? 2015? 2016? This was... Yeah, maybe 2016. Okay. It was either 2016 or late 2016. Yeah. You, were you with us? Um, is it the one where Chris... Yeah, Chris competed. Yeah. And um, I got interviewed by that girl from uh, Washington Post. Yeah, I was, the, I was yeah. there for that one. Yeah. I don't remember what year it was, though. Yeah. Yeah, that trip kind of changed everything for me because at the time we were just going outside. That's yeah. all I knew. That's all I wanted to do. Like I didn't really have a career in mind or like where I didn't know where climbing was going to go. I just wanted to climb. And I met this girl at the after party um, at the Soil Showdown and she saw my cane and was like, hey, you know, you're visually impaired and you climb. You know, that's sick. Like, who, you know, who are you? Yeah. You know, like, tell me about your, your life. And we got to talking, and at the end of the conversation, she was like, have you ever tried competing? And I was like, no, I would get crushed. What are you talking about? <laughs> Turns out you're, like, stronger than, like, 90% of just average climbers anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, for whatever reason, like, just being visually impaired, like, made me have to be way stronger just to, like, climb normally. Yeah. Um, so I was already, like, suited for competing. Mm -hmm. um, and so she told me about like a paraclimbing. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that sounds sick. We went and tried Bessie, a ridiculous sloping V1070C plus problem. To start, there was a crucial heel hook to set yourself up for some hard left hand slapping moves. There were times that Justin would ask for guidance for his left heel. On his best attempt, he didn't put his heel on the hold perfectly, but I made the guess and told him he was fine, as I felt like it would have taken more energy to place it better. Yeah. No, I mean, it's funny, like, it's true. You know, sometimes whenever I stab my foot onto a spot and I'm like, it's stain, like, is it Armin, am I on this foot? He's just like, sure. And then whenever I top or summit a climb or something and I come back down, he's like, yeah, you weren't on, weren't on anything. <laughs> but that's like, you, you gotta, you, you have to know when to do that too. Yeah, when there's a moment where it's like, it's gonna take him more energy to find yeah. the actual hold than to just like progress. So in a way you kind of like learned how he climbs and like couldn't mm -hmm. figure it out too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like even today on Bessie, like some of the times you put the heels like, okay, it's not like perfect, but like you got close to it. Yeah. The time you got the closest, like it wasn't perfect to the heel. And I was like, I could tell him like adjust it for another 10 seconds. But yeah, I guess he almost touched it. So. Right. Yeah, it's like there's a balance there of like saving energy versus like fiddling with beta or, you know, the foot or whatever. A lot of trust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's good, you know, it's that's why community for me is so powerful because like I couldn't be as independent as I am or like have it excel the way that I have without like the people around me that have helped. Yeah. The following week, I came back to climb with Justin and Armin at Guanella Pass. Armin was able to send Dark Horse that day and Justin tried Toxic Shock V8 while I attempted the low start. Toxic Shock was a boulder that was difficult for Justin, as it relied heavily on his feet and finding so many feet back to back wasn't an easy task for either of us. There are definitely boulders that suit Justin better, but Justin is always up for a challenge. As I overlay footage of Justin climbing with the simulation we created, I do it in hopes that you're able to feel and understand more of what it's like to be in Justin's shoes. However, I also think listening to his life story and life views is not only powerful, but helpful to understanding what his world is like. I'm not going to lie. There are times when I'm climbing and hanging out with Justin that I forget that his world is completely different. His strength, calm demeanor, and adaptability to his environment makes it easy to forget. But Justin explained to me that there are subtle things he does that I take for granted, such as eye contact. Uh, so I have a tendency to like stare at people without staring at them. Like instead of looking at them straight in the face, 
I'll like look off slightly. Yeah. Because I'm trying to get a better understanding through the peripheral vision. I'm trying to look, yeah. Um, but that's like not socially uh, normal, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. there's like etiquacies and things, and so. I learned to kind of blend in by like having, uh, you know, normal so social cues of when someone's talking to you to like look at them in the face even though I can't see their face. And other small details like his finger sensitivity is another detail that I would never think about. But as Justin explains... Yeah, except my touch sensitivity is probably not so good. <laughs> like, I don't know, honestly, like, if you guys, if people in the comments, like, yeah. have any sort of uh, advice for Brent, no, I don't know. Yeah, I don't even, yeah, <laughs> you just sand them down, moisturize every day. Right. Yeah. But it's funny because I have, like, pretty sweaty hands and so I want them to be dry and hard for yeah. climbing and it's hard for me to ignore the pain of like bad holds because like in my mind i could like sharp holds for me i just they don't, we don't get along because yeah. i can't ignore the pain like some climbers just, just like sensitive. yeah it's sharp it's too sensitive it hurts. it's like too in my brain i can yeah. like feel it in my whole body learning about justin's competition experience was a great way to understand better what the experience of climbing is to him if anyone has ever competed or is engrossed in the competition climbing scene, winning the IFSC World Championships for paraclimbing is just as much as an accomplishment as when, let's say, Adam Andra or Janja Garnbrit wins. Yeah, Innsbruck was crazy. Yeah. Walking into the stadium where they did all the, um, all the climbing and all the finals. Where when held. the audience hushes, Dude, that is powerful. It weirds me out. I had like a, like some of the people I've looked up to the most in climbing like coming up to me and being like, good job, like yeah. you deserve that. And uh, a bunch of people were saying like, yeah, the VI climbers uh, part of paraclimbing is our favorite because like it's so powerful. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, damn. Especially if like when, if when they have to yell or so if they don't have like the mm -hmm. mics, it's like crazy. Yeah, like the Japanese climbers where they, they solely use megaphones. Like they That's don't have crazy. any interest in, in technology. Yeah, as long as they is. have like a cone, they're good. Yeah. I mean, I mean Old works. Faithful, yeah, it won't break. <laughs> yeah, as, as well as um, it is really cool when like the coach helps them find like the start moves. It's mm -hmm. like really like, that's when you know the trust bond is there. Yeah. That's cool. Through the spirit of climbing competition and just listening and understanding, I drove home seeing Justin in a different lens. Justin is the guy who will cheer you on constantly while you're climbing, no matter who you are. He will speak slowly and think about his words. In this day and age with phones and fast information, it's easy to get stuck in our bubble and forget that there are so many stories to be heard and people to be understood. In a Washington Post article by Amy Markscores, she talks about Justin's tattoos. On Salas's left arm is a tattoo, a full sleeve, depicting the lamppost from C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It symbolizes just how dark the world can be, but there's still light and hope. It's this lesson of optimism and acceptance that I took home the most. Proper name what should I name this video? <laughs> <laughs> what it's like, or that's so generic though. I've always gone off of this one saying uh, for a long time now. Uh, I was titling some of my videos and like captions as life through broken eyes. You may have broken eyes, but like if you show people what it's like to be challenges, you're gonna fix some theirs. Damn. Yeah. It's ironic because although he told me that he considers his world as life through broken eyes, he fixed my eyes by opening up to me and letting me learn his story. Um, but yeah, we're just working on the documentary a lot. Yeah. Been filming for like six, seven months now. Yeah. Uh, filming while we're on the trip here in Colorado and gonna continue to film or we'll have a trailer out hopefully by early, in, well actually it's hard to even say when we'll have a trailer out. Hopefully once we have enough climbing footage, we'll be able to release a trailer and get people stoked. Yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll hype that video. Yeah, we're trying to think of a name for the doc right now. <laughs> Uh, I've been kind of throwing her out some ideas, but nothing is like super landed, so. Justin was able to get a V10 while he was on this trip, and I'm not going to show the footage here because I want all of you to support his channel and watch it on there. He did Earth Matters V10 7C+. I don't usually ask for this, but please share this video to everyone you can. 
The more exposure stories like this get, the more attention from bigger companies and climbers it can garner. I've talked to several climbers in adaptive climbing groups and they struggle with sponsorships and getting funding for competitions and trips. There are support groups like ACG, Paradox, but they can only do so much with the resources they are given. Governmental support for these athletes is extremely rare, so please share this video or even just have conversations about paraclimbing. This video would not have been made possible without the support of Fizzy Advantage who helped support Justin and Armin on their trip to Colorado and gave me a place to film our conversation in. So thank you to them and also thank you to my Patreons whose support actually helped me buy a new laptop after it broke going through airport security to finish this video. Thank you so much Justin and Armin for having me out there climbing with both of you. And thank you viewers for watching this. Good luck. Stay safe, and as always, keep crushing it.